So, the Masterbuilt Gravity Series 800. Today, I'm gonna do a walk around, an overview, and a burn in, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why I chose the Masterbuilt Gravity Series 800. Now let's get into it. If you're familiar with the channel, I've had a Masterbuilt Gravity Series 560 since they came out about two years ago. And to be honest with you, it was revolutionary in the charcoal grilling and smoking experience. It's because it introduced a digitally controlled charcoal grill and smoker to the market or the consumer for the first time at a low price. There are other gravity smokers out there, some custom builds, but you're talking thousands of dollars. Masterbuilt took a concept and simple technology and they capitalized on it and they made a pretty darn good grill. Now, the 560 wasn't perfect. It was a little small. Some of the racks of ribs, I would have to cut in half and pick and place them just appropriately, just so that I could get as much in the grill as possible. No big deal. About a half a year after the 560 debuted, they brought out the 800 and the 1050. Now, the major difference between the 800 and 1050 is simply size, and the 800 comes with a griddle, which is one of the reasons why I chose the 800 to begin with. So to talk a little bit about the features of this Masterbuilt Gravity Series 800, it is digitally controlled, like I said, and you can set temperatures anywhere from 150 degrees up to 700 degrees for that really hot sear. Now I'm gonna tell you from my experience, I don't need 700 degrees. I can achieve those sears at much lower temperatures, but it's there if you need it. Now, there are other charcoal grills like this on the market, the Char Griller Gravity 980. A little bit bigger, a little bit different configuration, but I can tell you where this one shines over the Char Griller is the fact that the temperature goes down to 150 degrees. The Char Griller only goes to 200 at a minimum. Now, where does that come into play? I like to smoke salmon, and the way that I smoke salmon, I keep the temperatures in the grill below 180 degrees. That is my sweet spot for the way I like the salmon to turn out. And to be honest with you, a lot of grills in this market don't go as low as the Masterboat Gravity Series does. And that is a key selling point for me, is that huge temperature range, and being able to do anything that I want outside of a cold smoke. Now there are ways around that, but we're talking about features inherent to the grill. I've compared this to the 560 and, I, and I've already talked a lot about the features, but one thing that I do like about the 800 versus the 560 was the foldable front shelf. There have been many times where I go to get the food off the grill and I've got to do a balancing act. I've got a tray, I've got tongs, I've got hot food, heavy food like a brisket. I need that extra space and just having that shelf up front to balance my food, to set a tray down, a cutting board, whatever is great. That's a huge feature for me. Now let's open this thing up. We have a three level configuration. We have our main cooking surface, which is 16 and a half by 24 inches, gives us 396 square inches of main cast iron grate cooking surface. We also have two additional racks. The top one we consider a warming rack. The one thing to remember is that as you close the grill, it's covered by the top of the lid. You don't wanna smash your food in that lid. The cast iron grates themselves have two settings we'll call them we have smoke and sear they have a different rack shape and they do that on purpose to maximize or minimize surface area of the grate that's touching the food so if you're smoking a brisket you want as much surface area of the meat exposed as possible and when you're searing a steak you want to get them nice thick lines from that cast iron grate one of the cool features of the Masterbuilt Gravity Series grills is the fact that you can add a rotisserie. Now, back in the day, I remember seeing a bunch of gas, big gas stainless steel grills at Lowe's and they'd have a rotisserie on it. And I thought to myself, man, who would ever use that? But now that I've been smoking a lot of meat, I think a rotisserie would be awesome to add to this grill. And in terms of smokers, Masterbuilt's one of the only ones that inherently offers a rotisserie kit. There are aftermarket ones and you can makeshift one yourself, but Masterbuilt does the work for you. The grills are already set up for it. You just have to put in some special brackets and put this on. Looking forward to doing some rotisserie rib roasts, some chickens, turkeys, all of the above. Now, when it comes to Masterbuilt Gravity Series grills, the Masterbuilt Gravity Series 800 is the only one that comes with a flat top griddle. You basically swap out the manifold, take out the grates, and put this right in place. Now you've got this huge griddle cooking surface that you can cook breakfast, you could do whatever you want right on here. 
I know me, I'm, I've always dreamed about being a hibachi chef. I'm not very good with them knives and all them tricks, but this will make you feel like one. Now, when I first got the Masterbuilt Gravity Series 560, not gonna lie, I struggled to get this thing lit. And my problem was I was using the wrong fire starters. Fast forward a few months and Masterbuilt came out with their own specifically made to slide right into the groove uh, for the fire starter within the hopper there. I can tell you that once I started using these, I was getting the grill lit so easily and it took away a lot of my frustrations with the grill. So today I'm gonna to show you exactly what it takes to get this thing started up. We're gonna go through the burn-in procedure and the seasoning procedure. We're gonna show you exactly how to do it. The Masterbuilt Gravity Series 800 has a 16 pound hopper. Now within that hopper, you can mix in some fist size wood chunks along the way. They do have a ratio in which they would like you to stick with. I can honestly say I don't really pay attention. I just put in wood as I see fit. But we're gonna go ahead and get this thing loaded up with some Masterbuilt lump charcoal, and we're gonna get it lit and show you exactly the process on how to do it. We're gonna open up that hopper. Now, get yourself some good fire starters. Tumbleweed starters, these Masterbuilt fire starters, and even a paper towel with a little bit of oil on it will do the trick. Something that I learned right off the bat with the 560s, you have to have a good fire starter. You can see I left the lid open. You need to leave the lid to the hopper open and you need to leave the ash clean out door open as well. Essentially what we're doing is we're creating a draft. We need the air to flow through the hopper so that we can get these coals lit. It's gonna take you between two and five minutes before we move on to the next step on lighting this grill. So we're gonna let this run and roll some smoke. We'll see you in a moment. The hopper is burning well. It is time to get the grill actually turned on. So we need to open up the air vents. There are these two paddles. Pull these out completely. This allows air to flow from the fan below through the hopper and then into the grill. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the controller. We're gonna turn it on. And for the burn-in process, we're gonna run at 250 degrees to, the, to start. So we're gonna hit the thermometer button. We're gonna turn this up to 250 hit the temperature button. Now you'll notice that the fans did not kick on yet. And that's because we've got the hopper lid and the ash clean out door open. We need to close these and then you'll hear that fan kick on. There's the fan. And then you'll notice here in just a moment, we'll get some smoke start to roll out from the cooking chamber. And this is going to push all the heat into the grill till we reach 250 degrees. What'll happen is that is a variable speed fan and we will get variation of fan speeds to maintain that 250. The grill is up to 250 degrees. Now this burn-in process, or like they call it, the pre-seasoning process, is all about burning off any remnants from the manufacturing or shipping process. That's any styrofoam, that's any oils or greases or any contaminants that are in the grill. What we're doing here is we're burning it off. So the instructions say, 250 degrees for 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, we're gonna crank the temperature up to 400 degrees, and we're gonna let that run for 30 minutes. I'm not gonna show you those steps. It's just about time and temperature. 250 for 60, 400 for 30, then you can shut it down and let it cool off. Now, the next time you fire up your grill, you're gonna to need to season it. So they say to take some paper towel or a towel and some oil and wipe over the manifold, the grates and everything. I think that's a bit messy. I like to use a good spray canola oil and I will spray that all over the grates, on the inside of the lid, on the inside of the grill, on the manifold and all of the metallic parts inside of the body of the grill. And then you run the same temperatures and times like you did for the pre-seasoning. So then after you spray this, we're gonna go 250 for an hour then 400 for 30 minutes. And at that point, your grill will be seasoned and it'll be ready for you to cook this grilling season. If you're interested in some of my most popular videos that I've done on my Masterbuilt grills, I'll put the playlist right here.